This is the first ever SaaS that I'm building and launching. I wanna walk you guys through how I built the whole thing and at the end, I'll give you a full demo, but to start off, what's the whole point of it? I've actually done these things before very manually on Twitter where you put thumbnails together and ask people which one they're more likely to click on. But how do you do this at scale, especially if you're just starting out and don't have an audience? This is where Thumbnailer comes in. The name is a work in progress, as you can tell, but if you have any better ideas, let me know. Basically, you're able to upload a thumbnail test which can consists of three thumbnails and then share a link for people to vote on these thumbnails. To which you might say, what about those that don't have an audience? This is why I built the discover page. It's a feed where you get tests from other users and all you do is select which one you're more likely to click on. That's basically it. I plan on adding categories or tags to these tests so that on your discover page, you can only see thumbnails from categories you care about. But to get into it, how did I build this thing? Like any project, I had to sit down and make a list of features I want to ship and how I plan on tackling them. So this is how I approached it. Number one, and probably the most important was time. I work a full-time job and I make these videos on the side, so I don't have much time to dedicate to setting up side projects that have a very high chance of just me abandoning them halfway through. The other was complexity. I didn't wanna spend too much time architecting the perfect infrastructure, picking the most optimal or fanciest auth provider with the best file service and all of that. It's again, very time consuming. I have three features that I consider a must. That's auth, file upload, and a database to keep track of all the thumbnail tests and all of that. And lastly was the stack. I really wanted to build a project with Next.js, so I was looking for tools that would integrate well with that. So with these three points in mind, and after long consideration, what actually did it for me was looking at stuff I've used in the past. So if you remember the video I made last month on the notification system, I used Convex for that, which I honestly found very easy to set up. So when I looked at their docs, I noticed that they also support auth and file upload, which means I can handle all my needs in one place. That's less to worry for me. And I also get access to the real time update feature, which actually came in handy for the comment section. So things were updating live, but this actually ended up being such a time savior. And they were also kind enough to sponsor this video as well. Now that I've outlined the pain points, how does it actually work? Setting up auth was pretty easy, basically just installing the packages needed, making some tweaks to the configs, and then I was ready to implement it. I didn't need anything special, so in terms of the auth tables, I just use the defaults that they provide. I did start off my app using email and password to sign up, but I figured this needs to be as easy as possible to log in, so I switched it to Google OAuth. This was also nicer since it gives me access to the name of the person in the profile photo, so I can use that for the comments section. But setting all of this up was a whole process. So let me know if you want to see a whole video dedicated just on that. After that, it was just wrapping my layout in this custom auth provider and adding some middleware to protect some of the routes I needed to protect. This middleware basically just runs on all the routes using this regex matcher and checks for the route and whether the user needs to be authenticated or not. Database wise, Outside of the auth tables, I needed a few more. I have a table for thumbnail tests, which is for the tests themselves. I have a table for thumbnail votes, which is just a relationship between a user, a test, and which thumbnail they actually voted for. And then lastly, there's comments. This is the comments that you see on each test if a user has any suggestions. This basically just maps a user and a specific thumbnail test. But that's about it for how the database schema looks. It's not a very complicated structure. I didn't want to overcomplicate such a small app. I do already feel like things like comments are such an extra feature that could have been left out of V1, but I really wanted it, so here it is. File upload is a beta feature and I knew this going into it. It seems to work great for my use case so far, although I did find it a bit odd. It's kind of like a three-step process to save an image. You first have to generate the short-lived upload URL to use, which is different than your regular API. You then make a post request to that URL with the file and that request if successful, it's gonna return a storage ID of that file, which is what you want to save to the database. In my case, I actually ended up passing that storage ID and saving the actual URL of the file instead. This is probably bad practice since now if there's any changes with that URL, I can't grab it anymore with the storage ID. But I guess with this three-step process, my only concern here is that between generating the upload URL and saving the storage ID to the database, a lot of things can go wrong. So I wonder how this is going to evolve over time. But in case you're wondering about this upload UI and honestly, most of the app, I generated all of it with V0 and it saved me a lot of time. Comments are pretty straightforward since I'm querying the comments table. It uses the real-time updates. So every Every time someone comments, everyone will see the latest comment. The cool part here though that I wanted to highlight is just how easy it was to set up this paginated query. You basically take in these pagination options in your route and pass them using the paginate property. Then on the front end, you use the use paginate query hook with the API route and how many items to fetch initially. I loved how fast this was, especially since query pagination is basic, but 
honestly so tedious to set up. For the discover page, I honestly didn't know what to go with. I also didn't want to spend too much time coming up with a fancy algorithm. So as of right now, it basically just queries for a hundred tests that are not yours and randomly picks one. Generating a random number is a bit tricky with convex because they want to have their queries be very deterministic. So it's not working as well as I'd want this to, but let me know if you have any ideas of how to do this in a nicer way. And as a certified SaaS, it has to make money, right? But I still want wanted this to be usable for free. So what I'm thinking is when you sign up, you get some free tests, but after you run out, you can just purchase some more. I'm yet to have this part figured out. Maybe by the time this video goes live, I'll have some sort of thing implemented. But what I know is I want to avoid subscriptions at all costs. For most products, I hate subscription models and I won't do that here. Basically, you want more tests, you buy however many you want and that's it. But yeah, now for the demo and I'll also have a link in the description. This is basically the first SaaS that I'm putting out there for people to use. So hopefully it's somewhat usable. You can create your thumbnail test. In my case, I'll use the three versions of the thumbnail that I created for the update video for last month. If you want, you can hide your test from the discover page so that your data doesn't get affected by people who aren't your audience. And that way it's a lot more targeted. You can also make the comments private if you don't want them to show up on the test page. But yeah, once I create the test i'm able to see it here on my dashboard i can go to it see the stats delete it if i want to but if i create another account and then i go to the discover page i'll now see that test and i can vote in it which is cool this will also update live for the owner of the test so you can get instant feedback i loved how fast i was able to get all of this done with convex and it's all in one stack too which i prefer in my opinion for these side projects most of what you see here i was actually able to get done in just one weekend but that's about it for my first SaaS. check it out in the description hope you enjoyed the video and 